Hello and welcome to Aviatrix Deep Dive. In this session, I'll be discussing multi-cloud network segmentation, or in short, MCNS. But before I discuss multi-cloud network segmentation, I would like to talk about some of the challenges that our enterprise customers are facing with respect to the security isolation in the public cloud networking. So the first challenge is, if they would like to isolate their cloud networks based on the business units, and customers or environments like prod, dev, QA, test environment, there is absolutely no way they can achieve consistent network level isolation across the regions and clouds. And at the same time, prod is sharing the same network with the dev and test without any network isolation. And there is a big risk of a test bringing the prod network down. Dev today is uh, dev, but tomorrow it's going to go into the production. And if dev is not secure properly, then the critical data is going to be compromised. With regards to the user access, like SREs, devs, partners, and employees, they wanted to make sure they all have different level of access, and rightly so. You don't want to provide them the same access so the partner can access all the resources available in the cloud. And then there are some non-technical challenges, which are business challenges. For example, there are multiple business units that are using the same network. Then how they can charge them back. All right, so now let's discuss what is multi-cloud network segmentation. Multi-cloud network segmentation, or MCNS, is a way to create consistent policy-based network isolation and segmentation across accounts, regions, clouds, and on-prem. Let's understand this by drawing a multi-cloud network architecture. So if we take a look at the architecture, then we can see this could be a region one of CSP1. CSP1 could be your AWS, Azure, OCI, GCP, Alibaba, it could be anything. So I'm just writing CSP1 in this scenario. Do you have different spokes? The spokes could be the prod environment, it could be dev environment, it could be test environment, or it could be like your business units or it could be from your customer's perspective, if you are a SaaS provider, then it could be your end customer one, end customer two, end customer three. And then there is another spoke, which we are calling it SS or shared services, that everybody wants to access this, or at least majority of your cloud networks wants to access these services, which resides in the shared services. There is a multi-cloud or multi-region aspect on the other side as well, which I'm calling it either it's a region two or CSP two. It has its own resources. It has its own environment over here too. And then it's connected to the transit and then transits are connected to each other, whether they are connected through the colo or they are connected over the internet or maybe if they are the same region, they are connected using the cloud service providers backbone. It could be anything. Now, the question is, how are you going to segment this? We just talked about it, the definition of multi-cloud network segmentation is, it's going to provide you a consistent policy-based network isolation and segmentation across regions and across clouds too. So what you can do over here, you can actually define your own segments. It's not like these are predefined segments for you. You have to pick it. You can just define anything you want. Whatever you want to call it, you can do that. In this one, let's say if I wanted to say either the prod or business unit one, this is my network domain one. Okay, and I'm going to color it with blue. And my dev or business unit number two, is an orange one 
and my shared services is red. As soon as you define the segments, then blue cannot communicate with orange or the red one. Now, what about you have some applications, maybe in region number two or maybe in cloud number two, which also belongs to the same prod or maybe business unit one. So at this time, what you have to do, you have to just color this particular network, uh, cloud network, if this is an Azure, then it becomes the VNet, just color it with the blue. And let's say if the other environment is considered as your dev environment also, then just mark it with the orange also. So now when you created something like this, then by default, Aviatrix controller knows that this spoke, which is business unit number one or prod one, is basically the same in the other region or other cloud. So it is going to be, in this scenario, this is your, again, this is your prod, and this is going to be your dev environment. So these two networks, the cloud networks across regions or across clouds, can communicate with each other through the Aviatrix Transit by default. But prod can never talk to the dev because they are placed in a different network domain over here. Okay, so this is all good, but what about on-prem, right? So on-prem environment, for example, for your data center, you can say, my data center, I wanted to color it with a different types of blue color, and it can only communicate with the shared services, for example. So now, even though at this time, since this is a different color, which basically means it cannot communicate with anything at this time, while blue can communicate with blue, and then the orange can communicate with orange. When you want these two different colors or network domains to communicate with each other, you create a connection policy between them. So. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a connection policy between this particular blue and then the red. Okay. As soon as you do this thing, data center or on-prem environment will be able to communicate with the shared services without any problem. At the same time, you also want that prod and dev can communicate with each other, but at the same time, you want to make sure whenever they communicate with each other, the traffic has to be first inspected by the firewalls. So what you need to do at that point, you need to create another connection policy between them. So you just do this over here. As soon as you create that, then the prod will be able to communicate with the dev in its own region or CSP and also across the region in the CSP. So this prod can communicate with this dev in a different CSP. So that is a consistent policy that Aviatrix is providing. Your on-prem could have multiple environments as well and you might want it to create multiple network domains if you have that kind of requirement, then all you have to do is to just create multiple connections with the Aviatrix Transit, and at that point, you can place them in different network domains. With Aviatrix Edge, that will make things much simpler for you. Okay, what about the users? You can do pretty much the same thing. For example, if this user is your employee or a partner one or and customer one, SRE one, then you can just color them differently. For example, I am going to say this one is an orange and this one is blue. So the orange user will have access to orange resources 
in region one, cloud one, and also the orange resources in region two or cloud two by default. So you don't have to do much about this thing. Okay, now let's talk about how Aviatrix is doing it. Let's drill into it. All right, so let's say this prod is 10.1, dev 10.2, shared services 10.10, the prod in the different CSP or region is 10.3, and dev again is 10.4. Your on-prem environment is 10.5. If I'm going to draw or write a routing table of my spoke gateways inside this prod or BU1, how does it look like? So from the perspective of the prod, the routing table of the spoke gateways Since the prod VPC or VNet or VCN has a CIDR address space or subnet of 10.1, then its routing table is definitely going to have 10.1 prefix over there. What else is blue? The prod in region two or CSP is also blue. So it will also have access to 10.3 by default. Prod has a connection policy with orange. So it means it's going to have access to 10.2 also. This, there is one more orange in CSP2, which is 10.4. So in the spoke gateways routing table, so far we have four prefixes. Does prod has any connection policy with on-prem? No, the answer is no, we don't have any connection policy. Is there anything else which could be part of the spoke gateways? Yes, that could be your transit cider address space or a subnet would also be over here. Now, what about if I'm going to create a connection policy between the prod and then the shared services? Then at that time, you are going to just add 10.10 .10 over here. So you really don't have to do anything over here, right? Everything will be done automatically by Aviatrix controller. Once you attach a connection policy between different network domains, then Avitrix controller is going to populate this spoke gateways route, routing table automatically. All right, so this is all about the multi-cloud network segmentation or MCNS. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you very much for watching.